Greetings, greetings, greetings. I'm Pastor Teddy Marshall of Word Fellowship Ministries, and you can find out more about us at www.wordfm.net. And the message that I have for today, well, let me, let me back up for a minute. Share, thumbs up, give me some likes, and subscribe. There we go. Let's get those numbers up. I'm growing. I'm growing. And I thank you all for coming back and, and um, supporting through watching and subscribing and thumbs up and um, sharing. So thank you. Um, what I want to talk to today, it was been on my heart. Um, I've seen a lot of things where people are um, passing away, but a lot of it by suicide. And it just kind of made me think about um, PTSD post-traumatic stress disorder and how early on when that was spoken of and when it first came to light, it was mainly attributed to um, military, like veterans and people in the military having gone through the um, uh, combat and stuff and then they had to try to deal with all of that and the, the effects. And so all of that came to mind, but also with, in conjunction with um, all of the, the recent um, passing and suicide and things like that, what came to me was it may not be where it's bullets and combat and stuff like that. It, it could be emotional. The stuff that we go through, the disappointments, the, um, the things in the weight, you know. So specifically in, within the body of Christ, and we're following the Lord, and we're doing what he says to do, and then there's this weight. And we're believing, we're holding on. Okay, Father, I, we, we got um, some ministries I know we're taught to um, write out the verses, the scripture text, you know, the verses that will support what you're believing for, make confessions, and we're doing all of this and plastering them everywhere, you know, on the, on the walls where we... Um, I heard one pastor, I believe it was Pastor Winston in Illinois, and he was saying of... Um, um, yeah, Forest Park, Illinois. And I remember him saying that he um, he and his wife were believing for something. I don't recall what it was, but she had taken a postcard. It had to, when he pulled up the toilet seat cover, it was something just uh, taped there. So we, we know to put all of these things around to keep ourselves motivated and encouraged. But in the wait, uh, there can be some frustration and some disappointments. And a lot of times the, the faith walk, it was, it's not those things, the weight is not discussed. But in that time, that's the time that God is preparing us and equipping us. That's when we're getting um, instruction and direction. That's where he's overhauling our hearts and uh, uh, causing us to align with his word and his heart. That's not talked about a lot. So we have a lot of believers who are thinking, yes, I got the revelation. I know what my purpose is. God has been talking to me. I know it. I got it. I'm ready. I'm good. Let's go. And then there's the wait. Sometimes it could be a little wait and sometimes it could be a longer wait. And sometimes you just out there for years and you're just waiting. But think about Abraham. He had to wait, what, I believe 25 years from the, from the time that the promise was made to him by God. And, but there is a wait. Now, for whatever reason, that's between you and God. Sometimes it's because um, he is preparing us to receive whatever it is so that we're built up in him so that the, the, the manifestation of the promise and the blessing won't um, destroy us. Because sometimes there's a weight, to, a weight as in heaviness to a, a, um, a blessing or promise manifested if we're not prepared for it. I know that there are other things that can occur within a weight. And it's to, to get our hearts right, basically, but it doesn't hurt any less. And sometimes without the understanding and, and sometimes without the, um, the intimacy with God, so he's taking us through the weight, there can be that emotional stress. So I look at it as instead of PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, what came up in my spirit was PESD post-emotional stress disorder because it's really emotional. Um, it, there's this, this high that God said it. I believe it. That's it. Faith is it. That's it. No other discussion needed. I got the scriptures. I got all of this. Okay, fine. 
And, but then there's the flip side of that that can, that can occur and the enemy is always right there waiting to pounce on us at every moment to try to, one, in his ridiculous frame of mind, to get us to, uh, to separate us from God, separate us from faith, separate, put the word tells us nothing, no height, no depth, no width, none of that stuff can separate me from the love of God. But he tries. And he works hard and I can't get, we can't get mad in that regard because if you've been doing something for as many years as he's been doing it, you ought to be good at it. Right. <laughs> but God is greater and his ways are better. So, uh, uh, where it seems like nothing's happening, God wants us to know, yes, it is. And through all the disappointments and all of the different things that we may experience or witness, God is saying, I'm right there with you. I'm right there. Let me turn it around for your good. Let me explain to you what happened. Let me grow you up in this. Let me show you where the, the ambushments are so that you won't get caught up again. Um, let me strengthen your spirit of discernment so you can discern. You can tell the difference between right and wrong, but you can also tell the difference between what's a decoy, what's a counterfeit, um, what's just, just a plain old slouch, <laughs> a, a leech. Because sometimes there are those people when our faith is high and we're walking with God and it's all strong and powerful and we're in him. There are people who see that and they're drawn to it. So they may um, uh, attach themselves or kind of slide up to us to try to befriend us. And God is like, no, no, no. I need to help you discern the ones who are part of your, your purpose, part of your walk in me, part of my plan for you. And those that the enemy sends, but then also those who come on their own because they're trying to get and try to glean off of what we have without putting in the work. But God says, no, 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 no. <laughs> I'm going to bless you. I'm going to bring you through that. I'm going to bring you out of that. Let's do this, but I need you to do it with me. And when we look at the word, um, I have Psalm 23 verses one, and then I'm going to three and four. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you. You God are with me, your rod and your staff. They comfort me. So we may have gone through these, um, difficult times and stressful times. Uh, and, and there is that post emotion, emotional stress disorder, but God is saying, but let come to me. I'm your shepherd. Let me take you through it. I'm your shepherd. Let me lead you. Let me direct you. Let me take the, the rod and the staff and kind of nudge you back on point. Um, and wherever you are, it may look like death. It's a shadow. I'm with you. I got you. Let's do this thing together. And now let me stop for and pause here for a moment. Post emotional stress disorder. What I see it is and, and how I understand it, you know, spiritually speaking, the Lord just, this kind of came to me was sometimes what we experience and what we witness and observe and things like that can cause us to such a wound that although we may have forgiven the person and we dusted ourselves off and we, we got up and we're moving and we're going on, but there could still be some residue in there. There could still be some buttons or triggers that um, the enemy would love to um, take opportunity to push, push those buttons or pull that cord or anything to try to control us and man manipulate us through our emotions. One way is, let's say a person whose heart been broken uh, in a relationship. And the Lord, so they're getting through it and they're forgotten, forgiven rather. And they're, and the Lord is taking them through and loving them back to, to wholeness. And, but then if there, there could be an emotional residue there from the brokenness that the person would be extremely hesitant or fearful to love again. To me, that's part of post emotional stress disorder. Dare I, dare, dare I believe again? Do, dare I love again? Dare I step out again? And the Lord is saying, I'm your shepherd. Come on, come on, come on, baby girl. Come on, baby boy. I got you. Come on, let me show you. And let's do this together. Cause sometimes, cause we did it on our own and we left kind of left God out. But when we do it with God, he says, no, 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 let's do this together. And then that way I can, I can show you 
the true ones that are of me. And then it doesn't always mean that the person is evil or they're the spawn of Satan. But if that person is not for you, then that's that. And it's not got part of God's plan. So why waste the time? He wouldn't have us waste the time trying to cultivate a relationship with somebody who's not part of it. No, 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 no. We don't have time for that anymore. Lord God, what's your plan for me? Who's to be a part of it? How do I go forth in it? What do I do? How, when, how long? Um, let's see, what are some of the other things? Um, when, where, how long? And he may even throw in a, um, an explanation. He's God. He doesn't have to, but he just may give us an explanation because he's dad. And he's just good like that. Another verse that we're going to look at here is, um, let's see. Joshua chapter one, verse nine. Have I not commanded you be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid nor dismayed for the Lord. Your God is with you wherever you go. Now, okay, now you're not going to put, put a little chuckle in there, right? I like the, that's the new King James version. I like the King James version because it says, for the Lord, your God is with you whithersoever you go, right? <laughs> wherever we are, God wants us to remember wherever we are, he's there with us. So we can, so when he says, haven't I commanded you to be strong and of good courage? He's like, I told you. I got you. I'm with you. Come on. You can do this thing. I'm with you. Do not be afraid. Don't be dismayed. Shake off that stuff. Come to me so I can help you to let those things go. I can reveal where those buttons and triggers are so they can come. They can, I need you. I need you strong. We can do this. Your purpose needs to be fulfilled. Now let's see. Then there's one more we're going to do. For God has not given us a spirit of fear but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So we can claim this thing. Yes, it hurt. Yes, we, we've been disappointed. Yes, we've been frustrated. Yes, there are all of the things in the natural that would say, come on, let it go, give it up, it's not happening. But we know that God told us to go a certain way. Hold to that thing. Don't be afraid, God is with us. And if there is something that we ought to let go, and, or a person we are to turn away from or put some distance or allow the Lord to put distance in there. Don't be afraid to let it go. Don't free, be afraid to step out when he says step out. Don't be afraid to do what it is that he tells you to do. Have no fear for the Lord is with us. And for all of that emotional stress disorder, all of the things that the enemy thinks that he's going to hold us back because we're going to keep remembering and harping on how bad it hurt before. Mm -mm. No, in the name of Jesus, I personally, Pastor Teddy, I take authority over those things right now and I decree and declare you will get through this. I decree and declare that you are strong. You are the head and not the tail above only, never beneath. The enemy can't stop you for the Lord your God is with you. That's what I say. That's what the word says. And I'm only saying what the word is giving voice to the word of God for you, for you on your behalf. May God be glorified in your life. Yes. Dare to love again. Yes. Dare to step out in faith again, but do that thing with God, our shepherd, trust him, re rely on him and believe him that he's got this thing. He, he, he formed it, fashioned it. Um, he knows the ins and outs. He knows the, the decoys that are going to be, uh, sent your way to try to draw you off into danger. He knows the counterfeits going to try to slide up in there and try to uh, befriend you to either not necessarily kill you. Um, but to siphon off your faith, siphon off your energy, your resources, your attention, all to try to get you to uh, step away from your affection with God. But I'm telling you, stay in close fellowship with the Lord to the point of intimacy and you will not be shaken. Things will happen, but the Lord, your God, your shepherd will be right there, wrapping his arms around you, leading in the way, leading you in the way you are to go. So let's get excited about that. And let's stay there in that excitement. Amen. That's all I have for you today. God bless.